Hey there, it's Anonymous T, where we spill the tea anonymously. Hello, 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 everyone. Hello, YouTubers. Hope you guys are all having an amazing day today. Sending good vibes, sending positivity, sending blessings, and good energy to each and every single one of you. Thank you so much for tuning in. So today we are talking Love Island USA reunion. You guys know why you are here. I am here to give my reaction because I thought this reunion was going to have potential. I thought this reunion was going to give me something, and it just gave me a lot of unanswered questions, you guys, and and a lot of tomfoolery, and I'm confused because you literally are, you know, a division of NBC Universal. You literally have the gateway to Andy Cohen and all the Real Housewives and Below Decks and uh, Vanderpump Rules reunions and, and all of these things, and this is what you guys come up with no 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 we're, we're gonna get into this drag session because it was an hour of 20 minutes of, of tomfoolery so first and foremost they have everyone on stage and, and and the seating was very weird but they had everybody on stage um there was like two levels and they had everyone but the four finalists right where Ariana is, you know, asking kind of like, hey, how's everybody doing? How's everybody's experience? Blah, 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 blah. And, and then Hannah comes out, you know, the gate with, oh, well, I'm receiving hate for my makeup and blah, blah, blah. Here's the thing, Hannah, right? And, and I'm going to say this. People need to differentiate what constructive criticism is, what giving an opinion is versus flat out hate and disrespect. It seems that, you know, a, a few generations, a few set groups of people uh, do not seem to understand what it means. And it's actually the people who are on social media the most who do not seem to understand the difference between having an opinion and giving constructive criticism about somebody versus flat out shading you and dragging you and uh, saying things below the belt and worse. It, it seems these people are way too sensitive here's the thing your makeup was a lot right I don't know if you put on like a, like a, if you just dumped a whole thing of makeup I don't know if you did like 10 layers of makeup I don't know if it's the makeup brand itself but it wasn't a good look for you literally uh the transfer anytime anybody gave you a hug anybody anybody did anything uh their their whole face turned into a powdered donut or or, or whatever body part they hugged you or whatever turned into a a, 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 bot, a a complete powdered donut so so people were trying to be nice about it because we didn't know if it was the makeup or your setting spray or lack thereof. And some people were cracking jokes, but it was never malicious. It was never hate. Like, like make it make sense. And, and then there's like these fluff questions to Connor because rumor has it that he is dating allegedly Ariana's best friend Katie, you guys, or they've at least been out on a couple of dates. So uh, it was awkward because Ariana was pretending like she didn't know who Connor was and that she never talked to him before. Make it make sense, you guys. And so um, then, you know, we finally bring out the finalists because because we'll get into a few of the other things, right? Um, a few of the other islanders as well uh so they bring out you know the other islanders and
So then Ariana asks the final four couples as they come out, you know, what is an update? They check in on the winners. Serena says uh, her, she said, we moved into a new apartment. So I'm under the impression her and Cordell live to live with each other. Right. Uh, So nonetheless, that things were going good or whatever. Uh, Basically, she she wants nothing to do with the show. Uh, Does not want to talk about Casa. Does not want to talk about anything um, as it pertains to the show. She was completely checked out and uh really didn't say much during the reunion and uh then we also had checked in with uh Leon Miguel, who apparently he asked her to be his girlfriend. However, there's like no receipts of anything. <laughs> so, um, nonetheless, uh, I guess we'll just we'll just go with it and, and see how this goes. And then when Ariana asked if the L word has been dropped or anything else, uh, Miguel was like, "Whoa, whoa, 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 whoa! One step at a time," because he's never had a girlfriend before. So this is just wild. Uh, then we get to Kenny and Janae, and Janae's like, "We're pregnant." <laughs> You know what? I've got to hand it to Janae because one thing about her is she's unpredictable and she's going to say whatever is off the cuff and her timing is impeccable. Kenny's face was so hilarious and even Cordell was like in the background. Uh, Kenny bleeped his pants (laughs) as if it was true. That's what made it even funnier was he was like legitimately shook as if this was a possibility uh so nonetheless that was hilarious but uh they did say that they were officially dating kenny's been tracking how long they've been together and all these things and i just find it absolutely hilarious and adorable at the same time and uh then we get over to nicole and kendall you guys and it's awkward it's tense it's all these things and and we go to a commercial break you guys so nonetheless it comes out that obviously we know the uh the scandal of the pictures the videos the revenge pee uh that basically came out against kendall and so we get back nicole throws Janae under the bus uh, that these uh, images and video was from their hotel in Fiji prior to being on the show and that these were sent to somebody that was on a dating app and I guess Kendall had lied to Nicole and said it was from an ex-girlfriend before uh, well before the show but that wasn't true Uh, you guys the cover-up's always worse than the crime but but here's the reason why I'm team nobody in this right I'm team nobody in this right Kendall, obviously, it's disgusting what somebody did with the revenge pee, right? Uh, But it's clear as day that he is the one that has the relationship with the cast. It is clear as day that he has already cultivated his side of things with the cast, which is fine, right? Apparently, he has also reached out to Nicole on several occasions, trying to apologize to her, trying to talk to her, trying to explain things. And it sounds like she just flat out ghosted him. So there was a relative, allegedly, uh, who said that Nicole and Kendall had been broken up, like pretty much when the show ended prior to the scandal. Uh, So nonetheless, it's giving kind of let me latch on to this. Let me use this scandal as my exit. But I'm going to play the victim as soon as the cameras are rolling. But the problem that I have with Nicole's angle in this, and this is not invalidating her feelings. Obviously, it is horrible what has happened, right? Especially if the rumors are true about, you know, the sexuality component, right? But nonetheless, uh, as far as like which dating app these alleged videos and pictures were being sent to or whom, right? Uh, But nonetheless, here's my thing. Why didn't we have this particular conversation in private, I don't know, the past three weeks? This is my problem, right? Kendall is saying in the Nick Vial interviews uh, that they were working on things, that they're going through something, but they were talking things out. They were working on things. But according to the both of them, they haven't been talking at all in several weeks and Nicole thought okay I can use this as my escape and I'm just not going to talk to him and then I'm going to bring it up as the at the reunion as a shock factor but the problem with this is that 
It looks calculated. It looks like you intentionally wanted to ignore Kendall and not address this with Kendall and then put him on blast in front of everybody. And that's why the cast took the approach that they did because they're like, listen, obviously this is horrible. Also, we don't want to invalidate Kendall because it's obviously traumatizing for him. But wait a second. He's reached out to you. He's told us that he's all remorseful. He's apologized. And I'm with Serena, who was also laughing because I think the I, I guess she was laughing at the awkwardness. But I also think she was laughing because I think she felt Nicole was full of it. Right. And, you know, the reason why is that. If the entire cast has been in communication and interacting with Nicole and it's or not with Nicole with Kendall and it's clear as day that Nicole is not cool with this cast, even though somehow she throws Janae under the bus, uh, nonetheless, uh, you know, if he's reaching out and there's receipts and she's not responding and then comes on this reunion stage to present another narrative as if, you know, uh, she was trying to talk to him and trying to work things out. And Kendall's like, I tried to fly you out to Dallas. I tried to do X, Y and Z and you were not talking to me. So you decide to bring this on a public, you know, thing. Now, Kendall did mess up of just not even releasing a statement at all. Um, and by the time he did release something, I think it was on his Instagram stories, it was like way too late. It was well after the fact, right? And confirmed that it was him. But nonetheless, uh, Nicole's math isn't mathing either. Nicole's math is an issue as well. And that is the piece that, you know, I don't think uh, she thought through. And, uh, you know, and as a result, even though they keep saying don't send hate or whatever else, her comments are in shambles, you guys. And then for some reason, somebody had the bright idea, you know, and then it left awkward silence as well. So it was funny because Janae intervened and and Janae should have just been the host of the reunion because she was asking the right questions and she's able to navigate through awkward situations and awkward silence and basically was like, listen, what are we going to do now, Nicole? Everything's out on the table. We know Kendall's been trying to contact you. He's apologized multiple times. Are we going to put up or shut up, right? Because how can you love somebody in ignore them for a month right like like make it make sense i think they were better off just saying that they were that they were done because even after this reunion they're still in new york and they're doing separate things they're doing separate press anything that nicole is a part of press wise or with the other islanders kendall's not there so she's effectively uh banished him to the background <laughs> you know so so if you were working on things if you were trying to talk things out where, where's the interaction just announce the breakup and be done or are you saving that for your exclusive with nick vial this week like, like, like we need to just put everything into perspective but i think they were already broken up and i think this scandal you know nicole wanted to utilize this to make her exit but she's not being completely honest as well about you know her side of things and if kendall has been reaching out offering to fly her out to dallas apologizing several times talking to all of the islanders about this and she is paying him dust he has, they also have every right to defend Kendall as well, right? Even though I, I've called out Kendall on plenty of occasions for his clout chasing and everything else, but in this instance, if he's tried to do everything to try to rectify the situation and apologize and everything else, and, and you're ignoring him, uh, what else is he supposed to do? You, you've ignored him for a month and, and all these things, right? And you thought giving him the silent treatment was going to work in your favor, but it actually is working against you if he has receipts and the cast has receipts that he has been trying to work this out with you and you've been blatantly ignoring him and then you want to put this all on blast on the reunion as your first real conversation that's not how this works that conversation should have had in private and we should have gotten an update on whether or not you guys decided to continue things or not you thought this through all backwards, Nicole. That's why people don't see it for you. And, and for some reason, they made the rest of the reunion about the Andrea dumping, which I felt was lame uh, because we spent like, um, you know, all this time discussing it. And then furthermore, we had to see the footage of what actually happened during the elimination. And, and, and then the editing was just chopped and screwed all together because it's like they spent a 
segment talking about the Andrew dumping. Then we move on to, you know, the Kaylor and Aaron stuff. And then we go into, oh, we got this exclusive unseen footage of this dumping. And, and it just was a hot mess. Uh, so Jane, Janae cracked me up because she has a booklet, a, a little bit of a term paper of receipts on page four that she started out with Andrea. Now, here's the thing. Those of you who are confused as to why Janae came for Andrea, Andrea and her friend had did a million lives, a million Instagrams and TikTok lives, and her friend was calling Janae ugly. They were throwing shade. They kept saying that the wrong person went home. Well, obviously, the only other people that were there was Janae and Nicole, and we know your BFFs with Nicole, so obviously, it's Janae. You want it gone, right? And you try to make it seem like you and Rob were this great love story, and he's paid you dust, right? He thinks that you're thirsty and doing the most. So, nonetheless, this all backfired. Also, Leah, I'm going to need you to fight your own battles. You're a Leo. Uh, there is no excuse that, that you need to have, you know, giving looks at Serena and Janae all night to have them come in and back you up and all these things. You should be a Leo. You're a triple Leo, I believe, right? So so nonetheless, uh, your sun, moon, and rising is all center of attention, is all the spotlight is on me, is all I'm a boss bleep. So there should have been no reason why you couldn't have handled yourself against Andrea. And here's the thing. Do you really dislike her or not? Because why did you refollow her on Instagram, right? And so then we have a break in the show where we go into the cyberbullying, the social media harassment. We hear from Dea, we hear from Daniela, we hear from Andrea about how mean everybody has been and, and all these things and sending on a live threat and, and to be kind, you guys. They're going to end up putting a social media ban on these islanders like the UK did watch but here's the problem you guys and Andrea um and not Andrea Ariana kind of exposed it because obviously she would know with what she went through being on Vanderpump rules is you guys have this attachment right and and she worded she put it eloquently I will say that that everybody's a character everybody's you know, to an extent, edited a certain way. There's things we don't see. There's things they left out. And you get attached to that persona, right? Whatever's being, you know, presented, whether it's a villain, whether it's an angel, whether it's whomever, right? You get attached to that image on the show. And when the show ends and they're out in their real lives, you are still holding on to that particular image, right? Oh, oh, this person was always messy or this person was always such a sweetheart. And you're expecting them to be a certain way and conduct themselves a certain way 24 and 7. And when that doesn't happen or when they don't interact with you or if you want to still try to forge some type of beef with other islanders or wonder why certain people are friends and certain people are not, and you guys get into, you know, these connections. It, it, it's not reality. We're only seeing, like I said in a previous video, we're only seeing an hour, um, you know, each day of, you know, six weeks where they're tw together 24-7, right? And so it's not to excuse or dismiss the problematic things that we did see on the show, but nonetheless, the Islanders have only been out a few weeks, I, I don't think any of them really has watched the entire show back, right? I think Janae only made it to 10 episodes, and I believe Kayla only watched the Casa episodes and beginning episodes in regards to specific scenes in regards to Aaron and what he was saying about her behind her back. 
But nonetheless, nobody has watched the show back, and most of the cast have no intentions of watching the show back because they don't like how they were themselves and how they conducted themselves, which is why some of them were on the mute challenge in the reunion trying to pretend it never happened. Um, and shout out to Cordell, who was knocked out during the reunion. I, I, could, I was cracking up uh, because it was boring, uh, and he had the right idea, you guys. And I think there was even a clip where Serena tried to wake him up. <laughs> Uh, but nonetheless, uh, that happened. And then also, um, you know, we finally get to the Aaron and Kaylor segment. And I thought Kaylor was trying to be a little bit performative. I, I, I'm sorry, you guys. I, I just don't believe. I don't buy what she's selling. I don't. She made it seem like, you know, she watched, you know, the relevant episodes back um, you know, but then Aaron spilled that they broke up in Fiji or shortly after Fiji at least once. And, uh, Kaylor said that she had everything that she needed to know and felt like an idiot, but they still somehow were still together and still, you know, involved in some capacity in New York City at the beginning of the trip. Uh, still, you know, sharing a hotel room together, still going out to eat and, and all of these things, you guys. And, uh, you know, but now all of a sudden you want to get Buck at the reunion and it doesn't make sense, right? And, and you're telling fans outside that you're right, you're not together anymore, but, uh, on the zoom in of the lock screen of your phone, it's couples pictures of you and Aaron. So then Aaron, you know, it's his turn to speak, right? And he's like, you know, I lied to you. I put my hands down Daniela's pants. Whoa, <laughs> what? <laughs> I, I, I was undone, you guys. I was undone because Aaron, you can just tell he does not care. He does not respect women, and he thought that he was going to get away with this. It was clear as day him and Kayla were not ex were not expecting this level of backlash, and it's clear that they're jealous of the other Islanders that are popular despite even some of their messiness, and they couldn't get away with theirs. Here's the thing. We didn't want a repeat of what happened with KK and Keenan, right? So, so nonetheless, any level of that was not going to be, you know, celebrated, right? Was not going to be rewarded. You weren't even going to be a finalist, right? And so, uh, Kaylor feels like she, at least she admitted that she was in this bubble in a land of Delulu, uh, with Aaron. And it was funny because during the whole time when Kaylor was trying to raise her voice and get Buck, uh, they, the camera pans to Janae who is eating popcorn and it's like the perfect meme because, you know, it, it, it Janae's all of us, you guys, she, she truly is. I believe when Connor was talking, uh, she was like rolling her eyes and fixing her eyelashes and I got upset because I guess Janae said in a new interview that came out today that she did come for Connor. She did cuss him out and it wasn't aired. They did not air it. And I'm thinking they didn't want to expose Connor because then it would also have to expose Leah. And nonetheless, uh, they're trying to protect Connor for some reason. But it sucks that he is not being held accountable for his microaggressions, for all the nasty things that he has said about, you know, Janae in interviews, and everybody's just pretending everything's kumbaya, right? And so then we uh, reach the climax where basically, you know, Kaylor, you know, she, she sits behind, you know, she can't sit next to Aaron, she can't stay on the side of him now, right? And sits now next to Olivia, right? Who Olivia now is in between them, and, you know, she has since unfollowed Aaron again, you know, for like the third or fourth time since being out the villa. I can't take this seriously. We'll wait and see what happens when the smoke clears and when this dies down. If they come back and they're like, oh, you know, it, you know, it was a heat of the moment thing and we talk things out. Aaron's bringing up, you know, a relative, his grandfather that passed away that none of us knew anything about. And it, it was just a lot, you know, and, and, and ultimately I left it with, okay, like, like we, we, you, you've been out the villa for three weeks, Kaylor, and you tried to make it seem like you were going to stand on business and the Nick Vial interview, but this entire time you still have been entertaining Aaron. So how am I supposed to take this seriously when you've had similar outbursts like these, when you've done TikToks claiming that you were single and you were not, and fans spotted you out with Aaron, right? Now, Aaron currently is back in the UK, but I am still going to wait this out. I am still going to wait and see what is going to come of this because I still do not trust it. Uh, so then finally, we have, you know... Um, 
like I said, the 30 minutes of the, you know, Andrea dumping, right? Because they kept asking, they kept checking in on Rob for whatever reason. And it was weird uh, because really he gave nothing. Cassie gave nothing as well, said that her and Rob are friends. It's just very awkward behavior that they send each other TikToks, I guess, um, for like their five minute romance. Like, like it's just a lot of, of, of whatever, right? Uh, Liv seems to be handling, you know, her newfound fame while, uh, you know, Dea had a moment with Serena where, you know, she's trying to stop the online hate and everything else regarding what happened with Casa. Uh, Danielle is saying she did her job as a Casa girl. You know, Sierra, they have like a whole little like kumbaya moment. And, and so does Kat. She's like, listen, I did what I was supposed to do as a Casa girl. You're supposed to build a connection and come back and make it back to the villa. That's what I did. And she said, obviously, in real life, I'm not going to go after somebody's man, right? But that's the point of the show. So they didn't understand why they were getting all this hate. And, and I didn't understand it either, right? Um, I get it. You have your preferences for the couples. But, like, as a Casa person, that's what you're supposed to do. I'm going to need some people to watch older seasons and the UK version on how Casa truly works. That if you have a better connection, uh, you know, you bring it back. Now, for some reason, this particular season, the guys wanted to use this as a test. No, 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 no. Either you have a connection that's better than the one that's in the villa or you don't. But but their tomfoolery, they didn't think this through. Uh, so they all ended up fumbling anyways, right? Um, <laughs> fumbling the whole cause of situation. So, so there was that. Uh, so what happened with this 30 minute thing about the actual dumping, all we really come to the conclusion is, uh, Leah was in fact the driver's seat. <laughs> she was steering it all. Liv was trying hard to get Nicole sent home though. That was new information. Nicole really had a real chance of getting dumped because she was not being honest about how she truly felt about Kendall, which brings everything full circle with this drama currently with Kendall is she never liked him to begin with was my takeaway from that segment. And I don't understand why people aren't calling that out. She did not like Kendall like that. She was kissing Miguel behind the scenes on the dock. She was telling the girls how she wasn't that attracted to Kendall, how she was more physically attracted to Miguel and wanted to see what was up with him and all of these things. That doesn't sound like somebody who was falling in love with Kendall, you guys. Can you make it make sense? Uh, so nonetheless, every time Liv was pushing for Nicole to go, it was Leah that kept redirecting to Andrea and talking about Instagram and talking about followers and talking about brand deals and that she's not here for love and that she's, you know, not here for friends and all of these things. It was Leah right? It was Leah that was leading that charge. Uh, so in fact, Liv was right. Now why Liv apologized? I don't know. It didn't make any sense. Uh, but nonetheless, the fallout of all of this, you know, Janae pulled out her receipts again about Aaron's comments on how Janae needed to be gone and how she wasn't deserving, you know, uh, to stay there over Andrea and all this stuff and taking up for rap. And, and it's just, the whole thing is embarrassing, you guys. And it, and it was just a waste because it was like, we could have just edited it down to like a few minutes of, to get the gist of it, to just show it doesn't need to take a whole half hour to expose Leah. But nonetheless, her fans are going to defend her anyways. And nonetheless, the cast really didn't come for Leah, even though it clearly exposed her because they're afraid of her fans. They're afraid of the fact that she is over 3 million followers and they don't want to get dragged. But right is right and wrong is wrong, right? And basically, the footage uh, proves Liv's point and proves Rob's point, which was... Uh, Leah did kind of drive it, right? Now, where the men went wrong was taking everything out on Janae and isolating Janae and saying Janae deserved to be home, uh, go home and being mean to her when it was all said and done, Rob had no intentions of ever leaving. Rob stayed and, and got in four and five more couples and is left the villa still single. So, so ultimately, you know, who won? Who benefited? It was Janae. Janae ended up finding Kenny, right? So nonetheless, and it was funny because there was like a segment in there where they said, could we not um, send anybody home and not have any new bombshells come in? And I'm like, well, then we wouldn't have gotten Kenny, right? Uh, so nonetheless, uh, the other thing that took place after the Kenny and Janae brief segment at the beginning was uh, Koi had an apology. Uh, and it was long overdue. 
He claims he didn't watch the show initially and was going off of clips people sent him and decided to go on these lives. And he kept matching Dea uh, that he was dragging Janae and Kenny and calling their relationship fake. And you could see Kenny's face. Uh, he was ready to beat some bleep. Um, but Koi apologized. Janae kind of was like, whatever. It seems they might have edited out Janae dragging Koi if, in fact, she did, because I believe she had some receipts on that document as well. And also, I want to say this. People who uh, are under the assumption that Janae knows what Leah and Connor said about her behind her back or whatever, a lot of what Janae has is what has been happening on these podcast interviews and lives. She only has information up until episode 10, you guys, but she is very much aware of the lives and the interviews that Connor Connor and Coy and Andrea had been doing in particular, and Aaron in particular, uh, that those receipts were pertinent, right? So these people who are trying to be like, well, what about the smoke for Leah? Well, she doesn't have the full story on that, right? She hasn't seen those episodes yet, right? And according to Leah, allegedly she did apologize in private. We don't know we weren't there, but but that's on that. But Janae is thinking big picture, you guys. And Peacock is promoting Janae in this hosting realm. So the move that she made, while you guys are thinking small, Janae's thinking big and long term. And that is, she wants to get into hosting. She wants to host one of these shows. And she is going to get to the nitty gritty. She is going to ask the right questions. She understands the temperature of the room, how to move things along. I think Ariana was peeping game towards the end and realized it. And nonetheless, Janae stole the show. Janae stole the reunion and Janae knew that her and Kenny were not going to be featured outside of a couple's update and Janae got to work and was like, I am going to make sure that I insert myself into every segment in some capacity, even if people think it makes me look bad because it is going to give me screen time. It is going to make me memorable. It is going to make me a meme. It's going to make me go viral. And who was trending when the reunion was over? Janae and Kendall, you guys. Janae and Kendall were the ones that were trending because a lot of people saw through Nicole and did not buy what Nicole was selling. Even if they don't like Kendall, they couldn't buy how Nicole waited for a month to put this on display and not have any private conversations prior to this and not acknowledge any of his apologies. So they saw that and they appreciated Janae for, you know, bringing entertainment to the reunion. That's what reunions do. Some of you new fans, some of you teenagers that aren't familiar with how reunions go, need to go back and watch the Real Housewives shows, need to go back and watch Below Deck, need to go back and watch Vanderpump Rules on Bravo, you guys. This is the whole point of a reunion. This is what NeNe Leaks came up with, was to reunite everybody together and talk about the most important moments of the show that changed the trajectory of the show. Where production went wrong, Wrong, is we didn't talk about the most important moments of the show. We made the show about Andrea, uh, Kaylor, and Aaron. We did not talk about the Casa recoupling and what happened, what went down with Janae and Kenny, what went down with Serena and Cordell that changed the trajectory. We didn't discuss, you know, what took place with the whole Connor, Leah, and Janae debacle. We didn't discuss, you know, several different other storylines. We didn't discuss, you know, Sierra and uh, what happened with Kane and Sierra and Harrison and Cassie and Rob. We didn't discuss... A lot of these storylines, you guys. And that was the whole point of a reunion. Not just picking apart one or two uh, things that you want to focus on and making that the focus. The reason that your ratings were so high was because of all the people that you didn't show, which was Janae, Serena, and Cordell. Can you make it make sense? But now I see why Leah said she wants nothing to do with Love Island once more because once more production uh, gives Leah their bleep to kiss because they don't like her. And I don't understand why you guys can't see that. They do not like Leah, number one, but number two, are they wrong in exposing her? <laughs> like, like every scene that we see of Leah is her being messy. So just own the messiness. 
Just own that you're messy. Just own you didn't see it for Andrea. Just own that at the time you still wanted Rob. And this was an opportunity, right? Because you weren't that serious about all of the other stuff that was taking place, right? But uh, nonetheless, this is just crazy in itself, right? of, you know, how much they fumbled this season. All of the press leading up to the reunion, all of the interviews was more entertaining than the reunion itself. Uh, the reunion, for some reason, I don't understand. Um, is there a partnership with Pizza Hut or something? Because all the product placement for Pizza Hut, for the pizza, then another product placement for some type of Pizone, uh adaptation they did and then another product placement of pizza hut of their wings of their boneless wings and, and i'm just thinking to myself and making sure the islanders are eating uh i don't know if that was shade to netflix or what but i'm thinking okay isn't new york supposed to have some of the best pizza and i've been to new york a few times right isn't new york supposed to have the best pizza uh why didn't we have you know a, a specially catered you know new york style pizza isn't kenny from the bronx couldn't he have given a recommendation for a restaurant uh, of a place to get pizza for the cast or was it cheaper to order pizza hut you guys can you make it make sense and, and the pizza didn't even look hot it looked dry it looked cold right it just looked like whenever uh they could take a break they could but it, it just seemed like they were taking all these breaks and it seemed like it was kind of weird like all these segments because the segments in between during the breaks everybody looked tense everyone looked like there was all these blow-ups that we didn't see and so that's why a lot of people are confused, including Kayla and Janae that uh, got on social media last night and said that what we saw was not the reunion they were expecting, which tells me, and they said that it felt very weird, which tells me by the reaction that the Casa girls had at one moment and the guys were saying how tense everything was, that there was a lot of explosive scenes that happened. And they wanted to put everything up in a bow for us and not show us anything that was going to make anybody look bad or that was going to show anybody cussing each other out. But that's the whole point of the reunion is to drag people for what you saw them say about you behind your back. And none of that was taking place. They wanted to keep it about, oh, let's, you know, focus in on the couples and uh, we're just going to focus on the Andrea jump dumping and we're just going to focus on Car Kayla and Aaron and that's going to be our show. And it seems that there was supposed to be a two-parter, but it seems with the way Ariana wrapped things up that there is not going to be a second part. What happened to all of the footage at Universal Studios and filming the girlfriend proposals that Cordell did in L.A. with Serena and that Kenny did in Dallas with Janae? What was the point of filming all these things and none of it is seeing the light of day on Peacock? Or was it just promo for all of these events for them to promote on the Instagram and TikTok? Can we make it make sense? So there is that. Please let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments. What did you guys think of the reunion? Uh, did you think it was a waste of time like I did? What were your highlights? What were your lowlights? Uh, what do you think of Janae saying a lot of stuff was edited out? What do you think of Janae, you know, inserting herself in different portions of the reunion? Yay or nay? I didn't have a problem with it because Janae said this from jump that this was what she, what she was going to do. Uh, and she had every intentions of doing. This is why people look to her at the villa because they always went to her to get her opinion on things, whether it was her situation or not. So I don't understand, you know, why some people and really Really, it's, some of it's coming from actual Janae supporters, which was weird. It's actually the non-Janae supporters that understood the assignment, that understood what Janae did, and actually are fans of her now. It's actually some of her diehard fans that are like, oh, you were supposed to be like Serena and be quiet. No, 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 no. Janae did what she needed to do because she is trying to become a host. She is trying to be in this space and get more gigs in this capacity, you guys. So Janae did the exact thing she was supposed to do. Now, please do not send hate to people it's not necessary you know not everybody got exposed the way that they needed to be but nonetheless uh you know obviously certain people saw what they wanted to see and some people saw the truth and that is why certain reactions are going viral more than others and kendall and janae are the ones that are kept come out trending right so there is that let me know your guys thoughts in the comments Please do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you're notified the moment I post new content on my channel. And with that being said, I'll talk to you guys again very soon.